Um, hey, everybody. Uh, appreciate you being here. I know I've got the end of day session here, but uh, this is going to be pretty fast. I've got a lot of content to get through. I'm Ian Fife. I work at Hortonworks. Um, and I've been, been there about six months. And before that, I've worked my, pretty much my whole career in business intelligence and data analytics and data integration at various uh, you know, data integration and BI companies. Can I get a quick show of hands here? Who here, who here is familiar with Hadoop? OK, so some of you are not. And then what about business intelligence? Are you all using various kinds of BI tools at your organizations? Who's using a BI tool? OK, all right. So it just kind of gives me some context. Um, so a little bit about uh, the company I work for, Hortonworks. Um, the easiest way of talking about Hortonworks is we're the company behind Hadoop. Um, Hadoop was originally built by, by Yahoo primarily based on a, a white paper written by Google. And uh, we hired a lot of the developers, about 30% of the contributors um, and committers on the Hadoop projects. Um, who now, who founded Hortonworks, and we're about, I think, about five years old now. We just had our five-year anniversary. Um, in fact, we were the fastest company, technology company in history to hit $100 million in revenue. Uh, we went, we IPO'd about a year ago. We're 100% open source. We give our software away for free, and then we sell support subscriptions. So there's no lock-in at all. If you, if you don't renew your support subscription, you don't lose a single feature. Um, that's kind of what we do for a business. In terms of why we're here at this conference, we partner very strongly with Pivotal. Um, Pivotal used to, until recently, they had, they had their own Hadoop distribution. They've stopped doing that, and now they're actually re redistributing the Hortonworks data platform, which is, which is Hortonworks platform. Um, and then also uh, Hortonworks, we resell a Pivotal technology called, based on Apache Hawk called HDB, and that provides a very high performance SQL interface on top of Hadoop, and I'll be talking about that as part of the talk. So that's just a little bit of context to why, why we're here today. Um, here's the agenda. Um, again, I've got about 30 odd slides, so I've got a lot of content to get through. It'll be about a slide per minute, but um, part, of, part of this will be for reference, so you can kind of get these slides offline if you ever want to go back and look at them. So people who are new to Hadoop, you know, really, uh, Hadoop is a very broad ecosystem. There's probably 20, 30 different projects associated with Hadoop, but really the core of it is these two projects, the Hadoop file system, HDFS, this is a uh, distributed file system. So Hadoop is all about parallel distributed computing. So when you've got very, very large data volumes at the terabyte, you know, terabyte level, petabyte level, you can't run that on a single server. So this is where you have very large clusters. It could be tens of nodes, or it could be hundreds of nodes. Even some, you know, some people have 1,000 plus node clusters. Um, so HDFS is running across that entire cluster. It looks like a single file system. In reality, it's running across the entire cluster. It's got built-in fault tolerance, built-in replication. It, when, you're, when you're dealing with very large clusters, you get failures, and, and Hadoop can handle those automatically. By default, it's keeping three copies of all data. So if a, Hadoop, if a node fails, it'll just re-replicate that data. The other part of core Hadoop is MapReduce, and this is uh, about parallel compute. So, you got, so it's about taking any compute problem. You know, again, the reason this was built originally was for indexing the internet, where you can break that down. You, know, you're, you can run, basically run that problem across multiple computers in parallel. And MapReduce is a way of doing that. You map the problem to run on multiple computers in the cluster, and then you aggregate the result, which is the reduce step. Um, so that's kind of the, the basic concept behind Hadoop. So it's all about parallel storage and parallel uh, compute. And really, from an analytics perspective, it's about dealing with very large data volumes, which you, you can't do on a single server, or it's, or it's too expensive to do you know, using traditional technologies like Oracle, or data warehousing technologies like Teradata or Netezza and so on. Hadoop is a much more economic, much more scalable way of doing it. Um, there's a couple of related projects I want to I refer to. One, the, the main one is Hive, Apache Hive. And what this does, it provides a SQL interface on top of Hadoop. So you can kind of think of it as a data warehousing infrastructure, it has a SQL-like language. And this is um, referring to kind of the early days of Hadoop. Um, and then we've also got HBase. And HBase is a, is a NoSQL database. Um, think of it as really an OLTP, it's a transactional database. Um, very high performance, very high throughput. So if you've got tons of you know, real-time transactions coming in, HBase is a great thing for that. It also has a SQL interface based on a project called Apache Phoenix. But the problem with HBase, it sounds like, great, this is the database that runs on top of Hadoop, but it's not built for business intelligence. It's not built for doing aggregate queries. You know, when you're doing BI applications, you're typically doing group buys and filters and sorting, and HBase is not built for that. It's built for doing you know, single inserts, single reads, uh, you know, OLTP transactions. It, it can do group buys, but it's not optimized for that at all. So really, it's not the, not the solution. 
So the rest of my talk, I'm going to be talking about the solution or the very, you know, multiple ways of approaching doing, doing business intelligence SQL queries on top of Hadoop. So really, you know, my perspective here, unfortunately, uh, Hadoop is awesome. It's great at managing large, large volumes of data, but it wasn't really built for doing business intelligence. And really, those requirements boil down to, to two things. You, know, you need the, the ability to do low latency queries. You've got to think of an end user sitting in front of a dashboard or a port or some kind of analytic. They're not going to sit there for minutes waiting for the res they, they want that, that split second you know, speed of thought response time. And then the other requirement is ANSI SQL support. All of these BI tools generate SQL. And there's various standards out there, the most recent being SQL 2011. And you, whatever tool you have you know, is going to generate that SQL. And, you know, Hadoop needs to be able to handle that, that SQL. But so, you know, the, the, initially the, the, the situation was not that great, but over the last few years, it's really, really started to improve a lot. So I'm going to start, uh, this is really going back a few years, talking about Hive on MapReduce. This was the original Hive in, in, uh, implementation. So it ran on that parallel compute infrastructure. Um, it was, it was great for doing queries, SQL queries against very large petabyte scale data sets. Um, but the problem w with MapReduce is it's very, very high latency. Typically, queries are going to take minutes, uh, in some cases, even going to take hours. So this, is, this works for batch type reporting, batch type ETL operations. But again, you're not going to have an end user using this in initial Hive 1.0 uh, on top of uh, Hadoop. It's just not going to work. You know, they're going to get very uh, tired of it very quickly. The other the issue with Hive 1.0 was lack of SQL compliance. It was kind of a SQL-like language, but it really wasn't true SQL. So most BI tools you know, couldn't work on top of it. So again, this is going back several years, the original Hive implementation, Hive on MapReduce. Um, so what people did as a result of this is they, they did the data movement workaround. And this is about taking the data out of Hadoop. So you've got all your data in Hadoop, you're managing it, you're processing it, but now you've got to break the really bad news. Hey, if you want to analyze the data, you've got to take that data out of Hadoop and put it into a, a relational database. And that's what people have done you know, for the last few years. So they're taking data out of their inexpensive architecture, Hadoop, and putting it into their expensive architecture, which is Oracle or Vertica or Netiza. And so it's not a great solution. And people who are moving to Hadoop, they don't want to hear this. You know, this is very disappointing to them. Um, but you know, on the upside, once you've got the data in your relational database, you've got very high performance queries, you've got full SQL compliance. Um, but on the downside, you've got the issue of keeping your data current. Um, you've got the cost and you've got the complexity of having ETL tools and, and maintaining this other database. So it's not a great solution. Now, getting, moving forward in time now, um, Hortonworks, uh, a couple of years back, we released a major new version of Hive called Hive on Tez. Um, you can think of it as Hive 2.0. So Apache Tez is kind of a, a newer version, kind of a newer framework for MapReduce. Um, I'm not going to get too, comp too, uh, too technical here, but it's based on a, an idea called the directed acyclic graph. Essentially, think of it as a much more high performance, much more speeded up way of doing MapReduce, where you're, you're reducing the number of steps. So here on the left, we've got traditional MapReduce. Here on the right, you've got um, using, using uh, a Apache Tez, where you're really simplifying the, the flow, and you're really cutting down the number of steps in terms of storing intermediate results along the way. So the bottom line is it's going to be many, many times faster than MapReduce. So Hive on Tez was a great step forward in terms of performance. You know, many times faster. It can still scale. You can just still do per petabyte scale queries on, on top of Hive, dot, Hive on Tez. But the problem is it's still not really quite fast enough. It's a lot better than the previous situation, but still, you know, queries could take um, up to you know, a few seconds to a few minutes. So it's going to be pretty tough for, you, for your end users. Now, the great news is we're about to come out with Hive on LLOP. So here I'm obviously biased. I work for Hortonworks. Um, I'm going to talk about some of the competitor technologies in a moment. But with our HTTP 2.5 release, which is coming out later this month, we're, reducing a, we're announcing a major new version of Hive called Hive on LLOP. LLOP stands for Live Longer Process. And really what the idea here is, is on every node in the cluster, you have a long-lived uh, uh, executor. It's an LLOP daemon which will run constantly. So you don't have that kind of startup uh, overhead of MapReduce where it just takes a few seconds you know, to get things running. This is constantly running. And the other big part of LLP is it's in memory. So you've got the in-memory cache. So as you run queries, that data will get cached in memory. So there's a good chance that data you need is already going to be in memory. So this, again, is going to be a whole you know, orders of magnitude faster than Hive on Tez. 
Um, I won't go through all the details here, but again, this is for reference. This is kind of a, an overview of what's coming up in, in Horton West Data Platform 2.5. So this is uh, comparing the two, Hive on TEDS versus Hive on LLP, so a significant step forward. This was on um, 18, uh, 10 terabytes of data on an 18 node cluster. And you can see some of the queries here are down at the kind of two, three, four second level, which against 10 terabytes of data, you know, that's, that's, that's up there, that's, that's getting pretty good. So this is at the point where you, you can now do real time speed of thought queries on top of terabyte scale you know, data sets using Hive on LLP. The other good news is great concurrency. As you add users or you know, the number of concurrent queries running, it's very, very linear in terms of uh, uh, performance and stability. So uh, we did a lot of testing around that. So you know, a lot of good news here. Hive on LLP, really, uh, so you get fast interactive query, you get much faster ETL if you want to use uh, you know, this for ETL purposes. Um, we've also expanded the SQL compliance, so we're getting very close to full SQL 2011 compliance. And what that means is pretty much any BI tool is now going to run on top of Hive. So it could be Tableau, ClickView, Business Objects, you know, whatever you want to use for BI, uh, it's going to run on top of Hive on LLP. And that's also backward compatible with Hive on TES. Hive on TES and LLP will be running side by side. You know, Hive on TES for your very large scale queries, Hive on LLP for the terabyte uh, scale queries. Um, now, I, I do want to mention one of our competitors here. Again, I'm, I'm biased, but um, you know, just uh, want to make the point that not all hives are equal. There's multiple Hadoop vendors out there. That, uh, Cloudera is one of the big ones. There's another company called MapR. They have a competing project called Apache Drill. We don't see much of that, so I'm not going to talk about that today. But, but I, I do want to talk about Hive in Cloudera. It's not the same as the Hive that sh is shipped with Hortonworks. Um, they've had their own project called Impala, which I'll talk about in a moment. And, uh, but the, the version of Hive that is included with the cloud area is really a long way behind. You know, it's lacking all of this support. So it doesn't have LLP, it does not have TES, um, it's lacking some other things. Again, I, I won't get into all the details here, but it's, think of it as going back to that original Hive on, on MapReduce. It's essentially what they're shipping. Um, they've bet on this competing technology called Impala, which I'll talk about in, in a moment. But just to be very clear, you know, not every Hadoop distribution is equivalent when it comes to Hive. So that was Hive, and I want to move on to um, Apache Hawk. This was a technology originally built by Pivotal. Um, they sold it as HDB, uh, Pivotal HDB, and they recently open sourced it a few months back, and now um, at Hortonworks, we now resell this product. We call it Hortonworks HDB. So Apache Hawk, this is a, a Hadoop native SQL engine, so it's running inside the Hadoop cluster. Uh, again, you've got that very large cluster with many nodes. It's running, think of it as running in parallel on every node in that cluster. It's fully ANSI SQL compliant, so any BI tool will run on top of it, and you're going to get that speed of thought performance. Um, it also has a machine learning component uh, based on Apache Madlib. So if you want to do predictive analytics, um, that's also included in, in uh, HDB. And it's really that part of it is aimed more at the data scientist type person, you know, somebody who wants to do more kind of predictive type analytics. And again, you know, originally created by Pivotal and now resold by Hortonworks. Um, here's the architecture. I'm, again, I'm not going to go through this in detail, but the, the key thing is this is running in parallel on the Hadoop cluster. So they have uh, an, an agent you know, running on every node in the cluster. It's actually originally built on, it's, it's actually built on the Greenplum technology. A few years ago, you know, uh, Pivotal uh, acquired Greenplum, um, and you know, Hawk is, now, is actually based on that Greenplum, which was an MPP. Uh, data warehousing technology. So think of that green plum engine as being the, the core of, of Apache Hawk. So we know, we've now got two kind of competing engines from Hortonworks. Um, so Apache Hive, um, think of that as the, the petabyte scale SQL technology. So if you want to do massive queries, um, that's where Hive is really going to shine. If you, if you have data, more modest data to the kind of terabyte scale, and you want to do that split second, you know, sub second response times, this is where Hawk or HDB is really going to shine. So that's kind of how you make the decision when, when to use which one. All right, so that was uh, Apache Hawk. Um, and by the way, the kind of topic I'm talking about more broadly right now is in Hadoop databases. So think of Hawk as an in Hadoop database. It's, it's you know, the way I think of it almost is like Greenplum running inside Hadoop. Now, the next example I want to talk about is called Apache Impala. Uh, this is another example of an in Hadoop database. Um, they, they've open sourced this. It's called, you know, it's from a company called Cloudera, but they've open sourced it as a, Apache Impala. It's still incubating as a, as a project. 
Uh, this is from their, their own website. But uh, yeah, pretty, you know, it kind of on the surface looks like a great technology. So again, it's bringing that massively parallel processing, that, that MPP database approach to Hadoop. Um, you're circumventing MapReduce, so you're avoiding that whole MapReduce paradigm, which is why it's so fast. Um, it's giving you direct access to that data in Hadoop. Um, it's giving you that kind of interactive query response time. Um, and the other cool thing about it is reusing the same metadata as used by Hive. So it doesn't have its own metadata. It's just using the Hive metadata and the Hive JDBC driver and ODBC driver. So again, the goal here is that you know, any, any BI tool can run on top of Impala, and you're going to get great uh, response times. It looks very promising, but we, we've done a, a quite a bit of testing with it, com especially compared to Apache Hawk. So in green, we've got Hawk. In red, we've got Impala. And the performance is not that different. We saw about a 30% uh, performance improvement of Hawk over Impala. Uh, this is uh, with five users. With a single user, we saw about a five or 600% improvement. So that, that was a lot more significant. But probably in the real world, you can have multiple users. So there's a, there's a modest improvement here. But really, the, the, the big difference we noticed was um, on the SQL compliance. Um, there's an industry standard uh, set of queries called TPCDS. Um, it's kind of the data warehousing uh, standardized you know, testing. It's a, set of, it's a standard set of data, a standard, a standard set of 100 queries. We ran all, actually 99 queries. And we ran all 99 queries against both Hawk and Impala. And you can see the in red here and orange, these are where Impala failed. So it actually failed on 47% of the queries. And it failed for a couple of reasons. One was either SQL compliance, the other was a memory limit being exceeded. You know, it was very, very memory hungry. So uh, again, it looked great on the surface, but uh, in reality, it does have a lot of issues um, which they, they need to resolve. So just to kind of recap on, on Impala, it does give you that fast interactive query. Uh, it, the good, good news is it does reuse all the Hive metadata and, and the JDBC driver, so the exact same as, as using, used by Apache Hive. But you know, on the downside, they still got some work to do on, on ANSI SQL compliance, which kind of does limit the kind of BI tools you can run on top of it. Um, it does um, have issues around concurrency. As you, as you raise the number of concurrent queries running, it becomes a lot less stable and queries start to fail. Um, the other thing is it's really terabyte scale. You, the, you cannot do kind of petabyte scale queries with this technology. Um, so it's against more modest data volumes. Um, and then the other thing is, is there's a fair amount of lock-in where, for example, the security model is based on Cloudera uh, unique technology. Uh, and yeah, actually maybe I'll skip over this, but this is more kind of feature level uh, uh, comparison of Hawk versus Impala. Probably the, one of the, the biggest things I'd point out here is, is Yarn integration, um, where you know, Hawk is fully integrated with Yarn. Yarn is the kind of universal resource manager with Hadoop. So if you're running different kinds of workloads, that's all managed through Yarn. And Impala is, is very poorly integrated with Yarn. Um, and again, they've got incomplete SQL support. Uh, and poor concurrency would be the main things I would point out. I know I'm going very quickly here, but hopefully this is uh, just kind of a very quick flyby almost of the landscape. All right, the next technology I want to talk about is, is more of an in-memory approach. And I've got a couple of different vendor examples here. Uh, the first one I want to talk about is, is at scale. Um, and at scale is, this is from them, again, from their website. The goal here is you can use any BI tool on top of Hadoop, your data lake sitting in Hadoop. And at scale kind of sits in the middle here. It's kind of think of it as a middleware layer. Um, they don't want to be the visualization. They just want to be that middleware, which sits between Hadoop and the BI tool. And they do a very good job of it. Um, and the, so that again, they work with any BI tool. The cool thing is there's no data movement. You're not having to take data out of Hadoop and move it into some other database. It sits to, you know, it's working directly against that data in Hadoop. Got a single semantic metadata model. Um, we actually resell it. So again, you know, I'm, I'm biased, but this is a product we, descended, we, we decided to, to resell. Um, and here's the architecture. So think of it, what AppScale is doing is running on an edge node with your Hadoop cluster. Um, and um, so it's, it's hitting that data directly in, in Hadoop. And what it's doing under the hood is, is building aggregate tables. So again, when you're running BI queries, BI applications, Typically, that's going to be aggregated queries with group buys and stuff like that. And what it's doing is take, taking the results of those queries, and it's building aggregate tables in Spark under the hood. 
So it's then querying those Spark tables, and Spark is an in-memory technology. Um, it then, if you do that same query again, or maybe a similar query, now it can get the data out of Spark and the data sitting in memory. So you're going to get that split-second response time. It never even goes back to Hadoop. So that's essentially what, what AtScale is doing. You can also warm the cache. You know, if you want to kind of preload that Spark um, in-memory cache, you can do that too. And that's, that's how they get the performance out of it, is by pre-aggregating the data inside of Spark. Um, so here's kind of the, the summary on, on AtScale. So fast interactive query, um, full ANSI SQL compliance. So it literally does work with any BI tool out there. Um, again, the call, you don't have to move any data. It's got great concurrency. As you add users, it stays very, very stable. On the downside, you know, I would say this is a moderate downside, but it, it is middleware. It is another application you need to install and maintain on an edge node sitting you know, by your Hadoop cluster. So whereas Hive is you know, inherently part of Hadoop, uh, this is something running kind of alongside of Hadoop. But it's a, it's a very good solution for uh, providing that kind of BI middleware. I'm actually getting through these slides very quickly. I mean, <laughs> um, I think we'll have time for questions. I think this is actually probably the final approach I'm going to talk about. And this is, again, an in-memory approach. It's a company with Zoom, Zoom data. Uh, but they've, they've, what they've done is pretty innovative. As well as in-memory based on Spark, they've got this approach called microqueries. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit. So the, they, they talk about this the concept of data sharpening. Um, and kind of the analogy here is when you're, when, you're, when you're on a very slow connection on the internet browser, when you pull up a big image, you know, you get the kind of blurry image. And then as it downloads more of it, it kind of sharpens. And that's kind of what they're doing in terms of data queries. So what they're doing is, is uh, they, they take a query, they break that query down into microqueries, and then they, the, all those microqueries run in parallel. When the very first microquery comes back with a partial result set, they start to render the data. And it will be an approximate result. And then as more of the microqueries return that data, that data will start to you know, sharpen, will start to kind of become refined. So you're literally looking at the report or looking at the dashboard, and it could be kind of almost refreshed in real time in front of your eyes as more and more of those microqueries come in. And then eventually, you know, all the microqueries will finish, and you'll get the final exact result. Um, but you know, typically, as an analyst, you don't need, always need you know, the exact number. An approximate number is good enough. And then having got that approximate number, you can then drill down or filter or visualize whatever you need to do. So that's kind of their approach. It's a pre pretty cool approach, I think. Again, under the hood, they're, they're leveraging Spark, which is an in-memory database technology. So that, that those microqueries, the results of every microquery is getting loaded into Spark. Um, and then you know, they query those Spark tables. So my kind of summary on here, again, you're getting very fast interactive query. Uh, you're getting full ANSI SQL compliance. Um, they've got built-in visualization. So this is a BI tool or an analytics tool in its own right. It's not just a middleware layer like at scale. You know, this is a BI tool. Um, so it's not open to working with other BI tools. You know, you're kind of betting everything on, on Zoom data. Uh, again, you've got no data movement. So this is working directly on top of your data in Hadoop. And you've got good user, con user concurrency. Um, similar to AtScale, it is, you know, think of it as running on an edge node, so it's running alongside your Hadoop cluster, something you need to install and maintain. Um, and again, it's not really designed to work with other BI tools. It, this is a BI tool in its own right. All right, so that, that's kind of the quick flyby. I just wanted to kind of summarize um, here. So really, the, I kind of think of this holy grail we've had for the, like, the last 10 years with Hadoop. And the, and the holy grail has always been, been I want to do sub-second queries against very large data sets, against terabyte, petabyte scale data sets. And that's a very hard problem you know, to solve. Um, but you know, through innovating at the core, and when I, when I say innovating at the core, I'm talking about Hive, you know, which is part of the core of Hadoop. Hive, is, as, as you can see, has come through three major, uh, three major revisions, I guess, and to the point where a Hive on LLP has really come a long way. And then through vendor innovation, you know, through technologies like AtScale and, and Pivotal Hawk and, and, um, and uh, so on, you know, we're getting much, much closer to solving that, that holy grail of uh, split second you know, analytics on top of Hadoop. So I, I kind of, all the technologies I've talked about today, I've kind of put into this scorecard. So first of all, let's talk about Hive. Obviously, green here is, is kind of good. Yellow is, is moderate. Red is poor. It's kind of the key. So Hive on MapReduce, you know, very, very scalable, 
very you know, not good on speed and SQL compliance. Hive on Tez, um, it's much, much faster. So that kind of goes yellow here. And also much better SQL compliance. And then Hive on LLP, which is super fast, fully SQL compliant, but it doesn't scale as much as Hive on Tez. So, you, so kind of a combination of Hive on Tez and Hive on LLP would be awesome. And that's exactly what we're doing with, with Hortonworks Data Platform 2.5. We've got both running side by side. So, and you can actually configure it. You know, depending on the size of the query, it'll either do a Hive on Tez query or it'll do a Hive on LLP query. And so essentially, you get the kind of best of both worlds, you know, where everything goes green. You can now do you know, split second queries against very, very large data sets. And you can use any BI tool on top of that. Um, the data movement workaround I talked about earlier in the presentation, you know, very poor in terms of scale and speed because you're having to use an ETL tool or you're having to write code to get the data out of Hadoop. Um, so you, you're kind of losing that uh, concurrency. Um, but obviously very good on SQL compliance because you're storing it in a relational database. So it's good, kind of good from that perspective. But I kind of think of this as a very dated approach, not, not really what I'd be advocating today. And then finally, you know, the vendor technologies we talked about. So Apache Hawk, um, you know, Apache Hawk, awesome in terms of speed and SQL compliance. You can you know, use any BI tool on top of it. Um, it's, really, oops, it's really designed for terabyte scale, you know, data sets, not petabyte scale. Um, so that's, that's why this is still yellow. Uh, Impala, I, I got yellow all the way. You know, scales, kind of terabyte scale. Speed is, is good, but not as good as some of the, the other competing technologies like Hawk. And then the SQL compliance is, is quite lacking today. So I think that's still, still yellow. Um, at scale, great speed, you know, because it's in memory caching, got full SQL compliance. But then again, it's kind of terabyte scale technology. You're not going to be using at scale against petabytes of data. And then uh, the exact same situation for Zoom data. So uh, that's kind of at, at a glance summary of, of these two different uh, technologies. All right, so if you have any questions you know, offline, feel free to email me. This is the link to the company. But anybody have any questions right now? OK, great. Well, oh, yeah, here we go. So a couple of questions. Sure. So scale and Zoom data, are they part of the No, they're not, no. Uh, I'm sorry, at scale, we do now resell. We announced about a month ago. Yeah, so it is a resell relationship. But you know, it's a completely independent company. Um, they're a startup in Silicon Valley. I think they've got like 100 people. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. That's right. Well, <laughs> I mean, you'll probably notice the only one that's all green all the way. And again, you know, I'm I work for Hortonworks, but yeah, you know, in terms of all green, yeah, this is the one. It's a combination of Hive on LLP and Hive on Tez, which is coming with a Hortonworks data platform 2.5 later this month. But you know, honestly, this is always a compromise, you know, depending on what's most important to you. That's why I can't say this is the one technology you should go for. It, in, some way, in some ways, it depends on what you're doing and what's most important to you, you know, in terms of scale, speed, and SQL compliance. It's, always a, it's kind of a trade-off. Um, yeah. So uh, say, for example, for today, if I adopt Pasha I have an Yeah. Uh, that migration, I think, would be fairly straightforward because Apache Hawk. So uh, at the end of the day, your data is stored in HDFS. It's stored as files in the Hadoop file system. There's various ways you can store that data, either as plain text or there's Hadoop has file formats like Parquet and, and ORC files. At the end of the day, uh, Hawk can run on top of those same exact files. So you don't you don't have to move the data or convert the data. You would just install Hawk, and it, it it would be pretty straightforward. Yeah. That would, because HBase has its own uh, way of storing data. So you would need to get that data into a ORC file or a Parquet file. And then, yeah. What about with the Pivotal Extension Framework? Oh, good point. Uh, yeah, sorry, the uh, Pivotal Extension Framework. Yeah, so with Apache Hawk, they have a, a capability called the Pivotal Extension Framework. You can extend that to run on other file formats. So in fact, yeah, I think you probably could run that on top of uh, HBase. Yeah. 
Well, you know, the problem with HBase, like I talked about earlier, is not designed for aggregate queries. It's designed for OLTP transactional queries. So you're probably not going to get the performance that you might hope for. Yeah. HBase. Yeah. yeah. HBase just inherently is, a, is OLTP. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? I think we're at the 5.30 anyway. So appreciate you, your time. Thank you. Okay.